after a reign of unchecked gangster terrorism, which has shaken the city administrations to its foundation and caused the resignation of the chief of police, comes the announcement that Roger Renfrew has been elected to head the Civic Reform League and, and wait a minute now, I want you to get a load of this one. It is with pardonable pride that the editor Evening Gazette admits no small part that he played in selecting the honest, upright citizen, Roger Renfrew, to head the Reform League. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that ain't hot, huh? <laughs> the editor put Renfrew in. Oh, boy, what a laugh that is. <laughs> well, we put that one over anyhow. Boys, it's been a long, tough fight. And it's cost me plenty of dough. But I got this town sewed up tight. And this Reform League is going to be a great cover-up for what we're going to pull in this burg. And nobody's ever going to suspect that our gang's behind it. Blackie? Yeah? You can open up the gambling joint whenever you're ready. <laughs> All right, fine. Lou? I'm going to give you the slot machine privilege in the third ward. That's swell, Chief. Get. You can have that lottery racket. Suits me, Chief, if Renfro stays in line. Hand me that phone, and I'll show you that Renfro does what I tell him. I'm the boss in this man's town. Hello. Give me Madison 6145. And as regards the vice situation in our fair city, I am happy to say that owing to an unfaltering devotion to my duty, the criminal element has been swept from our midst. <clears throat> Hello. This is the City Reform League headquarters. This is Brad Franklin. I want to talk to Roger Renfrew. Just a minute, please. I see if Mr. Renfrew is in. It's Mr. Franklin. He wants to know if you're in. Listen, Miss Edwards, how many times have I told you that I'm always into Mr. Franklin? He's never to be kept waiting. How do you do, Mr. Franklin? I'm sorry you were kept waiting. Okay, Roger, old pal. I was just checking up. Yes, I'll never forget your kindness to me. Yeah. I'll tell you when we can get together and line things up. Assuredly so. Yes, yes, Mr. Franklin. I'll be seeing you. Yes, thank you. Well, have I got Renfrew eating out of my hand, or <laughs> have I? <laughs> I'll say you have, Chief. <laughs> and her, boss. Good enough for me. <laughs> While we're about it, I might as well check on Madison of the Gazette. Just a little bit of soft soap, you know. That'll be a good idea. You tell him, boss. Well, boss, how'd you like the way I played up that Brad Renfrew story? It was a beat. The press didn't even have a line. Hello, Brad. Just a minute. How'd you like my newspaper? Tops, eh? And how? I'll show that Daily Press bunch some real newspaper publishing from now on. When we get through with them, there won't be any Daily Press. There's only room for one newspaper in this town, and that's a gazette. Well, I'll be seeing you. Goodbye. Well, well, are we sitting pretty, or are we? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope we are, anyway. <laughs> Boys, all my life I've been waiting for a setup like this, and now I've got it. In the palm of my hand. Well, come on. Let's have a drink. <laughs> a fine bunch of newspaper reporters I've got working for me. The Gazette just got a scare headline, and we haven't even got a line of it in the press. Are we running a newspaper or a home for broken down journalists? Ha! City editor, eh? You stop me if I'm wrong, Mr. Stanley. But I always thought that a city editor was a man who got news for his newspaper. What do you mean, Chief? That's what I mean. How does it happen that we haven't got a story on this Reform League thing? Who's on the city hall beat? Why, uh, uh, Dick Lawrence is. Dick 
Dick Lawrence, eh? Well, where is he? Hey, you! Yes, sir. Find Dick Lawrence and send him to me. Right away. Well, get to work. Don't sit there staring at me. Who are you running a newspaper or a pulling circle? First thing you know, you'll all be looking for another job. What's the idea of passing the buck to Dick Lawrence? You took him off the city hall beat last week yourself. Well, what if I did? I know what I'm doing. Listen. If the press tries to fight that Reform League crowd, we'll be put out of business. Hello, folks. Thank you. That'll be a good one for the funny pages. Hey, you grasshopper, where have you been? The boss has been looking for you. you never tell when you can use these. Let me try them on. Show you how they work. <laughs> there you hey, are. Hey, 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 what is this? What oh, is this? Oh, don't get excited. I bought them for a buck. Here, only phonies. Look, got something else. See this? Hey, don't point that thing at me. <laughs> it's only a point. <laughs> <laughs> Say, you're fired. You understand that, you big clown? You're fired. Well, I wasn't even fooling. Get your junk off your desk and get out. Get out. Get it? I do the hiring, Ellie. You're covering City Hall, aren't you, Lawrence? How'd you miss that Reform League story? Well, to tell the truth, Mr. Parker, I didn't think you wanted to stir up that mess. What do you mean, mess? What mess? I mean, there's a pretty tough bunch of racketeers and gangsters behind Renfrew and the League. The press would have a fight on his hands if they stirred them up. The Chief Madison of the Cassette, he's mixed up with them, too, some way. He is? Yeah. Then get me the story on it. Find out their names. Find out who's behind it. I'll expose the whole thing. You better lay off, Chief. You're playing with dynamite. Dynamite or no dynamite. If Renfrew is backed by crooks, I'll expose him. Get me the complete story, Lawrence, and get it quick. I'll show them the press isn't afraid. That a boy, Chief, and I'll get his resignation, too, if you want it. If you do, I'll give you a nice bonus and a raise. That's a deal. Hey, get these confounded things off of me. <laughs> Look, nothing to it. <laughs> Maybe I can use them again. Why did you take that assignment? They'll kill you. Not a chance. I know how to handle those babies. But saying you'd get his resignation. Oh, don't be a pike. All I have to do is get the goods on him. And he'll wilt. And couldn't we use that bonus? And say, how about that raise? I know, darling. But just the same, I'm worried. If what they say is true about that Reform League bunch, they won't stop at anything. Not even murder. And, Dick, dear, I don't think I'd like that. You're so reckless, I... Dick Lawrence, have you heard a word I've said? Honey, you're the most beautiful girl I ever saw. Dick, do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, well, yes. You were saying, why, you were saying, talking about the... <laughs> well, you see, I was Dick, thinking about... Dick, you will be careful, won't you? You won't take any chances, will you? I'll be as careful as an old man with a basket full of eggs. Is he uh, really going to tackle that Renfro assignment? Yes, he is. Why? I just wanted to make sure he wasn't bluffing.
Who answered, boss? Go ahead. It might be one of the boys. Hello. Frankie Smith. This is Stanley of the press. You remember? I'm the one you warned about letting any reporter write you up. So I wanted to come in the clear with you fellows. Yeah? Wait a minute. Yeah. Hello. Well, what about it? You're in the clear. What's the lay? Parker has assigned a reporter to uncover that Reform League setup. Yes, you see, I just wanted to let you know I had nothing to do with it. So you wouldn't put the slug on me. All right. We'll attend to it, thanks. Get the boys to work on that reporter. Tell them to get in the works. Maybe it'll teach them to lay off a wren through. All right, Chief. We'll do it. So that's the way you betray your newspaper, is it? You're too yellow to fight for decency in politics. So you listened in, eh? Well, there's plenty more stories in this world to print. Why should I get killed for this one? I've been warned against this Reform League gang. Now, if Lawrence wants to take a chance, that's his funeral. If you were more like him, the press would be a newspaper we'd all be proud of. Dick's not afraid of anything. He's a real reporter. Real? There's nothing real about him but his luck. He was born with a horseshoe in both hands. I bet if you took his shoes off, you'd find one on each foot. May, why don't you give up this fellow? He'll never be anything but a dub reporter. Can't you get it through that thick skull of yours that Dick Lawrence means more to me than a thousand of you? And don't try any more of these tricks or I'll tell Mr. Parker. And there'll be a new city editor sitting in your chair. Where are you going to? None of your business. If I wasn't a lady, I'd tell you where you could go to. Hey, fella. Are you from the press? Yes. Why? Say, I want to talk to you. You have anything to say to me? Say it. Come on. You can have it. These two fellows shot me, and I kind of mussed them up a little bit. I'm afraid you did. What's the meaning of this rowdyism? Tell us, copper, we're okay. We were sent up here to protect you from this bozo. Who sent you, fellas? What's his name? And who are you, sir? Me? Well, I'm Dick Lawrence from the press. I'm here to interview you on your connection with the gambling gang. And if possible, uh, get your resignation from the league, you know. Sir, your audacity amazes me. I never was so insulted in my life. Me? Identified with the underworld? Why, I, I... Ah, baloney. Tell them you got Brad Franklin in back of you. That'll make them pull in their horns. Brad Franklin? Is he the power behind the throne? I shall not allow myself to be insulted. I, I... Hey, say, you stuffed shirt. Ain't you gonna square this pinch for us? I never saw these men before in my life. Wait till our big boss hear this. Get me Mr. Madison of the Gazette on the phone. Yes. Give me Madison 6145, please. Hurry. Come on, copper. Take us to jail. The quicker you get us down there, the quicker Franklin will spring us. All right, come on. Excuse me. My hand off here.
Come on, let's go. How did you get here? Oh, uh, a little bird told me that you might need a policeman. But you were having too much fun to notice me. Yes, it was hot while it lasted, wasn't it? It seemed that they knew I was coming here. I wonder how they knew. Well, maybe I'll tell you someday when you learn to hold your temper better. Are you all right, dear? <laughs> um, I, I mean, are you all right? I guess I am, except a broken rib or something. Oh, 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 oh. I, I think I punctured my heart. Oh, listen, listen. Just listen. You can hear bleed inside, can't you? <sighs> Didn't you hear anything? This is no place for lovemaking, Dick. Why, any place is the right place for you, sweetheart. Well, you didn't get his resignation, did you? No, I was a little bit too busy, but I'm going to get it right now. Watch me. I'd like to see Mr. Renfrew for a minute. Just a minute, please. Mr. Madison's on the wire, sir. Oh, thanks. Uh, give me the Franklin file. Hello, Madison. This is Roger Renfrew speaking. Listen, Madison, I've got to square myself with Franklin. Two of his men were up here and were arrested. Well, you'd better fix it up with him. He's talking to Madison. Maybe I can get there for him. How can you arrange it for me to meet Franklin? Well, go to Fifth and Broadway and pick up Edwards. Yes, he'll take you to Franklin. But be sure you're not followed. He doesn't want his whereabouts known. Yes. Yeah, Thanks. I shall be going out for a while. I don't know when I'll be. I'd like to see Mr. Renfrew right now. I won't be more than a second. Mr. Renfrew can't see you. He's going out. Oh, all the more reason that I have to see him right now. Just missed him. Dick, what are you going to do? I must find out who Brad Franklin is. I've got to follow Renfrew. I must get down there before he gets away, honey. Drive to Fifth and Broadway, Frank. We're to pick a man up there. Yes, sir. The gentleman went with Mr. Renfrew. Round the corner, then straight ahead to 10th Street. I'll tell you which way to turn. We gotta make sure we're not followed. Franklin doesn't want anyone but our own crowd to know where he hangs out. Good idea to forget where this place is, Renfro. I understand.
Pisano forgot these papers. What apartment did he go to? 217. And I know it wasn't just the right thing to do, Mr. Franklin, but I couldn't admit to knowing your men before that first reporter. It's all right, Ren. Through all of us getting a spot at times, but that's all over and done with. I got him out. No. Now, uh, how about uh, meeting the ladies, huh? Well, of course, uh, a man in my position must be very careful, but... Uh, <laughs> A little relaxation now and then. <laughs> you know, all work and no play. Exactly. <laughs> Hold everything there, boys and girls. Wait, wait. I want you to meet a regular fellow, Roger Renfrew. Girls, treat him right, will you? Huh? <laughs> there you are, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Madam, I've come to fix your telephone. But the man just fixed it. But, uh, well, I have to fix it again. But... See, you can never tell when you have to use one in a hurry. You see, maybe your baby gets sick or... But I haven't got a baby. No? Well, then suppose your husband gets a sudden attack of gout in the middle of the night. What would you do then? I haven't got a husband either. I'm a maiden lady. My, my. And such a beautiful woman, too. Oh, you really think I'm beautiful? Yes. Oh. Hello? Hello? Operator? Hello, hello. There you are. What did I tell you? I have to trace it from the outside. Upstairs. Blackie, Louie, Chip. Come away. Young man, I don't think you are a telephone repairer. No, but I thought I was, madam. You fellas look down the hall. Come on. Oh, I suppose you're going to tell me you're a telephone man. What? Where's that bozo had just come in here? Bozo? Oh, and he just went up here. And if you don't get out of here right away, I'll scream. Don't scream, lady. Come on. Oh, oh if they publish that thing in the newspaper, I'm ruined. I'm ruined. Oh, don't worry, old Tom. The boss will get it back for you. Do you think so? Why, certainly. Oh, I'm afraid not. Did you find him? No, he's not on this floor. Well, he's not in there. Then he must be on the roof. We've got to get that camera. Take the fire escapes and we'll take the stairs. Hello. Yes, yeah, send him in. That's Renfrew. 
something dreadful has happened. I'm afraid my career is ruined. Yes, I know. Franklin just told me. Now sit down, Renfield. But uh, we, we can't afford to lose our heads to take this. But that now sit down. But what am I to do? The Daily Press would have took a picture of all of this. If they have a public shot. Oh, oh I... shut up. Give me the phone. I'll get the picture back. Well, what are you going to do, Mr. Franklin? Wait a minute. Gonna turn the boys loose. The press asked for it, now they're gonna get it. Blackie, tell him I want to see him. Hello, there, honey. Hello. Hey, smart guy. Did you get anything on that rent for assignment? Did I get something? Will you see what's in this camera? I want news, not pictures. Did anyone ever tell you you were supposed to be a reporter, not a cameraman? Okay, but I'm gonna have the film developed first. Just a little bit ashamed of showing the white feather. See, nothing has happened to Dick. That's what's got me worried. See, that bunch is not easy to lick. That's only what you think. It depends on who's fighting. And there's another complaint I've just received. A okay. change! Did I get a picture or did I get a picture? Look, I made some enlargement for you. Please. What's this? It's just an old Stanley custom, Mr. Parker. But I don't mind. My job is a little pawing. We'll have no more of that, Stanley. That is, if you value your job. Now, that's the one I want you to see. Behold the sadly Roger Renfrew, head of the Reform League at a gin party. Oh, Dick, that's great. It'll cause a sensation. Why, what's the matter, Mr. Parker? My boy. Do you know who that is? Yes, yes, that's Franklin. Franklin. He seemed to be the head of the mob. Florence? That man is Chuck Ballard, public enemy number two. He's wanted by the federal government for kidnapping, counterfeiting, and almost every crime on the calendar. Then there ought to be a reward on capturing him. That is, if he is uh, Chuck Ballard. That's Ballard, all right. I'd know his face in a million. If you look through our files, you'll find that I'm right. This is a sticker. Hands up and keep quiet. Come on, that goes for you all. Get him up, all of you. Keep him covered. Now don't pull anything funny and you won't get hurt. I'll trouble you for that picture of Renfrew. Here it is. I didn't have anything to do with it. Come across with a negative, too, mister. Or I'll get rough. Now face the wall, everybody. And stay that way for five minutes. Snap into it. On that picture. Oh, yes, we can. I made a couple of extra prints in the dark room. You know, they were ballot men that held us up. I'll follow them. Maybe they'll show us where he hangs out. No, Dick, you better not. But honey, we can use a reward, can't we? Look, honey, you try and trade that picture for Renfrew's resignation. Goodbye.
worried. Dick went after those crooks. Something might happen to him. Don't worry about that boy. He'll take care of himself. Hadn't we better call the police? This seems a matter for their attention. Later, when we get our extra on the street. This is one time the Gazette can't beat us. Snap out of it, sister. We've got to get a newspaper out, you know. Bill? Yeah? Get me a copy of that Renfrew picture from the dark room. And I want you to run an errand for me. All right. Just the boys. We got the stuff, boss. Print and the negative with the cinch. Nice work, Edwards. Someone's at the window. Go around the back way. You fellas get through the front. from the press office. So that's the lad that snapped the picture, is it? We'll give him a working over that he'll remember. Maybe it'll teach him and the rest of the press reporters to lay off a Renfrew. Well, let's finish the hand first. I got threes for you fellas to beat. Come in. A messenger from the press just brought this. He said it was important. The messenger brought this still waiting? No, sir. They got me Madison on the phone. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Madison speaking. What's that, Renfrew? Did I hear you say you were resigning from the league? Why, I think you're a... Listen, Madison, I don't care what you say. I'm going to resign. You can tell Franklin it's every man for himself. Get me the Daily Press. Mr. Stanley, where's this one? Lawrence isn't in. Who wants him? He's one on the telephone. It's important. I'll attend to it. All right. 
Operator, give me Lawrence's call. This is Roger Renfrew. Come up to my office as quickly as you can. I'll resign. I'll do anything you say, but only for heaven's sake, don't publish that picture. Okay, I'll be right over. And so now to business. Say, maybe that conk on the head killed him, boss. Eh, you can't kill a reporter with anything but kindness. Them babies are tough. Yeah, hello. Oh, just a minute. To you, boss. Franklin talking. Oh, hello, Madison. I'm glad you called. I got some great news for you. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Franklin. I've been fooling all over town trying to locate you. Hell is broken loose. Renfield, he's resigning. What's that? I'm telling you, he's turned yellow because the press threatens to put on the heat. We've got to stop him or he'll tell all he knows and we'll all land in jail. All right, I'll meet you at Renfrew's office right away. I'll make him stay in line. Take care of that bozo till I get back. Blackie, Jip, you follow me. We got work to do. We better tie this bird up. He's liable to come to and kick up a fuss. Yeah, Brad is skin us alive if we let this bird get away. Well, ain't that considerate? He brought his own handcuffs. <laughs> yeah, I guess that'll hold him. Come on, let's play a couple of hands till the gang gets back. Stanley of the press. Mr. Renfro said he wanted to see me. Just a minute, Mr. Stanley. Come in. There's a man to see you. He said he's from the press. Oh, show him in. And don't disturb us. All right, Mr. Stanley. How do you do? How do you do? Won't you sit down, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Stanley is the name. Oh. Mr. Lawrence sent me over. Oh, yes. This is all, all very, very distressing, but that picture must not be published in the press. Oh, you know how those things are, Mr. Renfrew. Now the publisher, Mr. Paul. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, I suppose you'll insist upon my resignation. Well, very well. I'll write it out right now. Stay with the car. We may have to make a quick getaway. 
We'll use Renfro's private elevator. He's from the press. He came for my resignation. Oh, he did, huh? You can't see Mr. Renfro. He's in conference. Well, he's in something, that's certain. I don't know what you're trying to say. Right there. I'll attend to this. And you're going to get a little the same unless you change your mind about this resignation. What's this all about? Not a thing. Only I'm trying to teach that press reporter not to buck up against Brad Franklin. Blackie, don't let anybody in here. Now, Renfro, we're going to get to this resigning business. Sit down. telling you, Renfrew, that there'll be no resigning from the league. I spent too much money to let you or anybody else to upset this apple cart. You're in, you're going to stay in. But the picture, Never they're mind. going to publish it. Never mind about the picture. The boys got the picture and they destroyed the film. Well then, how do you account for that? Bring that smart fellow over here. Now, you talk, and you talk quick. I don't know anything about it, I tell you. I... Well, I, I do. Put up your hands, gentlemen. Well, well. Imagine finding you here. I bet you try to double-cross me by getting that resignation, huh? Line up, facing the wall. And make it snappy, boys. Now that we're all comfortable, we'll get down to business. What's the meaning of this indignity? Why, I'm... I'm sorry, Mr. Madison, but that's just exactly what I'm trying to find out. Come on, yo, you heard what I... Come on, you heard what I said. Well, Stanley, you think you can pull yourself together long enough to see if our visitors have any guns? Why? No, that's all right. Put him in a drawer, Stanley. You'll have to excuse me a moment. I want to call up my paper to report a capture of a certain criminal by the name of Chuck Ballard, otherwise known as Brad Franklin. What do you mean, I'm Chuck Ballard? You will have to answer that when I turn you over to the police. Good heavens, Chuck Ballard. And I, I didn't know. It's growing worse and worse to think that I'd associate with a criminal of that type. Shut up, you stuffed shirt. If it hadn't been for you, this wouldn't have happened. Well, where's Stanley? I don't know, Mr. Parker. He went out a while ago. Have you heard anything from Dick? Oh, well, Mr. Parker, you went on the telephone. All right, I'll take it here. Hello. This is Parker. I'll take that call here. Hello? 
Oh, hello, Dick. Believe it or not, Mr. Parker, but I caught Chuck Gray Ballard. What? And the rest of the Reform League crooks. Yes, they're all here in Renfrew's office. Better give me a rewrite, man, and take down the story. And then send for the police. Hold the papers and clear the front page for an extra. Oh, boy, what a story this will make. Here, get on this wire with a notebook. Dick Lawrence has just caught Chuck Ballard. Hello. Hello, Dick. This is May. Hello, sweetheart. How about a date for this afternoon to get that marriage license? You know there's a reward on uh, Chuck Ballard. Well, I got him. <laughs> the gun's funny. Get it. Hello, May, sweetheart. Are you still on the wire? No, you lug. Name is Jim. <laughs> okay. Now for the headline, press exposes Reform League gang. And for the subline, pull the wire. Well, there's your prisoners. All right, Mac, let's take them out. Come on, Come on you. You too. Oh, Dick, darling, are you all right? Are you hurt? A right as rain. Now, honey, how about that uh, date? Well, I'm waiting for my answer. You know, that reward will buy an awful lot of furniture. And I'll stand the honeymoon expense as that bonus I promised. Then I guess there's nothing more for me to say. But, yes. <laughs> 